Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How. And in this video, we're doing a dash cam. We're doing a dash cam install on the D-Max and we went with one of the best in the business. This is from Blackview. It is the DR900X two channel, the two camera version, and it is the plus version. We're gonna be unboxing it, we're gonna be installing it, we're gonna be testing it. Let's get started. One of the key highlights with this guy is it's one of their cloud dash cams. So what that means, as far as from a connectivity point of view, as well as having your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, G sensors, GPS, the whole box and dice, you can actually set these guys up so it, it will automatically upload all your footage to the cloud, which which is which is pretty dang cool. It's also Ultra HD, so 4K 30, which is pretty cool. The same as this video, which is pretty awesome. Sony sensor as well, really, really important. You'll see the cheaper versions, what have you, that claim they're 4K. That's, that's all very well and good, and maybe it is in the resolution, but if the sensor is rubbish, you're gonna get rubbish footage, and you can see that the footage that this thing puts out is crystal clear, which kind of is the whole point, right? Like, you, if you have an incident with something like this, using the parking mode or something, which, of course, this one has, you wanna be able to see what actually happens, and particularly when at night. So, this guy is gonna have all of those bases covered. So as far as what we get, take that one off there, we get a couple of dash cams. This is the two channel version, which means we have front and rear. This guy being the front version, looks a little bit or a lot just like that. We then get our little rear facing camera as well. So it's gonna give us that front and rear view of what's going on. We get a bit of a user guide here and a quick start guide that goes through all the bits and bobs. But of course, you got a video for that. And then finally, a box with all of our bits and bobs. So that's everything that comes with the box and pretty much everything you're gonna need. The only other things you're gonna need is a micro two fuse tap if you are installing it into a D-Max like this or the type of fuse that your vehicle uses and of course the fuses themselves. But other than that, that's everything we need. Now let's get cracking and putting those guys into that guy. So the first step is location, location, location. And you really wanna have it as close to the rear vision mirror as possible, the center line of the vehicle. So not hugely excited about having something right here in the center of the window. However, on the side here, just to the left, if we pull this guy up, that's where I have my toll tag. That thing can get put in the bin. And on the side here is where we're gonna mount the front facing camera. So it's pretty well in the center line. And then for the rear, pretty similar, pretty similar. We wanna get it pretty much right in the center of the rear window. The other thing you really wanna make sure of is the stroke of your window wipers. You really wanna make sure where possible that these are not coming in front of the vision of the camera itself. So this is gonna be another pretty good spot over the side here, because as you can see, we're, we're missing the existing tag. So if I've got this up nice and high, we're not gonna get any interference on the placement of the front camera. So tag removed, that's relocated there, no problem at all. Now before we go installing our camera and tape set up, we need to make sure that everything is super clean. So grab your glass cleaner of choice and then we wanna be giving this a bit of a once over, both in the front and in the back. And once everything is squeaky clean, grab your front module itself, and then you just gotta position where you're gonna have it. Now, like we mentioned, the D-Max has the world's largest sensor cluster in the, in the front there, so I really don't want this down in here. I want it sort of up tucked out of the way. So for me, it's gonna be living up in the top corner here, tucked up there as tight as possible. And there we go, all nice and installed. Best to do this when you're not in the full sun as well, so that that tape really does set. We've still got full use of our visors, good to go. Now to do the same for the rear. So with the front camera installed and our rear as well, the next step is to sort our wiring and how we're gonna power the thing up. Now Blackview give you a couple of options here. One is probably more the, the removable option, the, the fact that you can power it via a cigarette lighter socket there if you, you may wanna get this thing removed at some point. The other version is the full hard wired mode and this is the one that we're gonna use for the install today. So here's our wiring loom for the hard wired version. Really high quality kit with great connections on one side. We have our inbuilt fuses as well and then three connections on the other end. We have our black for ground of course. We then have our constant 12 volt cable here. This is our battery. We need a constant 12 volt there. 
And then the other one is an accessory cable, and that is going to only be powered up when we turn the key or press the button, as it were. So let's grab our bits and install the wiring. Now in the D-Max on the driver's side, underneath where your little coin tray is, if you just lift that guy out, there's all your fuses. So what we need to do with our micro two fuse tap is we just need to work out which one of these guys we're gonna tap into. We wanna find one that has a little bit of headroom depending on the device that it is powering. That way with these guys, you basically slot that in to where that fuse is. You put that fuse in one side and then the second one that we want to run to our dash cam in the top there as well. So that way you kinda using the same circuit, but still protecting both of the devices. Now for the ignition on, we're gonna be using the USB. Let's give it a bit of a test and I can show you how you can do that. You just need to get a test lamp, hook it onto an earth section of your vehicle. The bolts for your door is always a good one to use. Now if we poke that in there on the positive, we shouldn't have a light when the car is turned off. If we turn the car on, however, we get power. And if we turn it off, no more power. So that's saying that the USB circuit is only live, it's only functional when our ignition is on. So that one's perfect for our accessory, our red wire. For our yellow wire here, we need to once again find something here that is going to have constant power even if the ignition is off. And then for our constant power, we're gonna be using this guy right here, the spare fuse. Surprise, surprise, it's a spare fuse. Thank you very much, Izuzu. If we plug our little multimeter in here, our little test light, there we go, you can see that we have power to that at all times, even when our ignition is turned off. So that's the one we'll use for constant power. So then how these outer circuits work, you can see that here's our power coming in with the blades there. The bottom one here where the wire is not connected to, that's our existing fuse. So you'd put the existing fuse, in our case, our 10 amp fuse for our USBs. We'd put that in there. That's still giving the, the full circuit that 10 amp protection. And then our second one here that will be accessory for our dash cam, we can put that little fuse in there, which doesn't have to be anything crazy. A, a one amp would be, would be sufficient, but the smallest you have, and then that protects the secondary circuit running off this. The smallest I have is a five, but it's not too big of a deal because the wires themselves are inline fused, so you're all good in any case. So it should look a little like that. Once you've got them set up, it's a matter of just plugging it in to our fuse box. Should look something like that. We've got our wire ready to be connected to. Then we've just got to do the same with a, a, another little fuse for our constant power running off this guy right there. So now that we're good to go there, we have our power source. It's just a matter of connecting up our power leads themselves for the camera. We have our yellow wire here is our constant power, like we said. That's just gotta go into our top one here, our ignition into the bottom. And then finally, our earth, our black lead, has a, has a pre-terminated end on it. And surprise, surprise, we have a really nice earth that sits just in there. We just gotta undo that bolt and connect that one up as well. Right, so you're all done on your wiring. Really, really straightforward. From here, we're sort of, we're, we're getting close to being done here. We just need to route our power wire up the side here and then all the way around, all the way around to our dash cam itself. So to do that, you wanna grab your handy dandy black view trim tool. And then if you are on a D-Max, it's pretty straightforward, guys. You wanna just feed our cable here through the side. This section here pops off, so you can just pop him out just like that and get plenty of, plenty of wiggle room in the side there. Most cars are gonna be exactly the same. And then what you wanna do is you wanna use your trim tool and just get in underneath the weather stripping here. You can see in there, it's there pretty easy. So you just wanna go along and feed your wire as you go through all the way around until you get under the hood lining up here to where the camera is. So just take your time when you're feeding it through. One thing to bear in mind as well is any airbag. So you don't wanna be going across where an airbag module is. You wanna make sure you are sticking to the weather stripping as you go up, and then make sure when you do come in under here, you're right at the top and you're not covering any of the airbag. And our final step before we power this bad boy up and start configuring is we wanna install the cabling that routes to the rear. So same as what we did here, we wanna start measure, go up underneath all the way around, 
all the way around. Same sort of deal until we get to our rear camera. And there we go, we're able to go back down. We've got a, this much sort of surplus down the bottom so we can sort of bundle all of that together and, and, and tuck that away in our fuse section there. So once you're all bundled together, I recommend bundling the power and the signal in different cables. We then uh, can pop all those back underneath there and put our fuse container back into place. So from here, we are ready to go. The final thing we need to do, if you just press on the lock, you can slide this guy out. What we need to do is install our SD card because that's where we're gonna be saving all of our footage to. And to install that guy, it's nice and easy. You just need to look for the open side here. That little thing just pops up and slides gently around. And then there is our SD card slot. So we can install that one. And once that's installed, you just need to swivel the housing back around, gently clip it back into place. There we go, we are ready to go. And then it's just a matter of getting our pre-routed cables. We've got one for our power and one for the rear camera. And there we go, it should fire right up. We can adjust this around so that it's sitting. And there we go, it's talking to us. Telling it's doing a, a, a doing a bit of a doing a bit of an update there. Black gear for your safe driving. Parking mode on. And there we go. It's straight away recognised we are uh, in parking mode, and it's doing that because of the way that we wired everything up. It recognises that we're in accessory mode, and there we go. We can see it's in parking mode. It's detected some motion there and is recording. So we've gone for a bit of a test drive. We've gone for a bit of a spin to make sure everything is working A-OK. -okay. And we have our front camera here working a treat. We can see all our status lights working as intended. We've got record, we've got GPS, we've got Wi-Fi connection, the lot. Same story with our little guy sitting out the back there. What we're gonna do now though is set up the app so that way we can have a look at the settings that we can modify remotely without needing to touch the unit itself. So head on over to your app store, just search up Black View, just like that. Install the app and we can open that up. We've got to set up some permissions. And then here we go, here's our, here's our main screen. We want to connect to camera itself. Connect to camera, it's doing a bit of a search. And there we go, here is our camera. There's the 900X Plus. Just tap on that one. There we go, so it wants us to connect. We just need to put our hand towards the proximity sensor. There we go, just like that. It then detects that and goes, hey, I've connected, you're definitely it. And here we go, it's loaded up our settings and here, Already, we can see some footage that we have taken there. We need to set up our dates and, and what have you. And then here's some footage from our front and rear. We can flick over to our rear view. Here we go, that's out the back of the D-Max, out the back of the tub, out the front there as well. But if we wanna go into our settings, once we're in this main screen, just up the top there, into settings, and then here's all the firmware settings that's saved. So from in here, we've got our basic stuff, setting image quality, oh yeah, high, extreme, that's what we want, that's the 4K30. We then have things like our record options, we can tell it what type of park mode we want. So motion and impact is the way forward for me, so when something happens, it'll, it'll make sure it's recording. GPS, speed, all of that good stuff, which is pretty cool. And if we back out of there, sensitivity, this is really important. So when we're in parking mode, this is the sensitivity on what sort of impact. So whether we want just someone brushing against the car, you know, or, or whether there's actually a, a fair solid thump uh, in the night for it to start recording. And then same thing, the G sensor in the normal mode there as well. And then in system, this is where we have all sorts of settings, which is really cool. And one of the big advantages of a high quality, so premium unit of this is the customability. You can really go to town. Things like low battery shut off and you can customize what that looks like as well. So that's pretty awesome. And there you have it guys. That is the install of the Blackview DR900X. 
it's the two channel so there's one at the front and there is one at the back there as well you can see them just hiding away we're in we're in sentry mode there it is it is protecting the d-max and for me that is one of the cool things about this other than being super high quality in everything that comes with it's giving you that that peace of mind that you've got some some something to cover your back if you're ever in any sort of incidents or anything that happens to the car while you're not there. Big thanks to the legends over at Blackview for sending one of these over to do the install with. If you wanna check out this particular camera where you can buy it, all the rest of the Blackview range, I will put some links into the description for you to head over and check out. That's it for another one, guys. I wanna say a massive thank you to the patrons of the channel. The little bit of extra support goes a long way. Thank you very much. If you've got this far in the video, thank you very much for watching. Share the vid with any of your mates that also may find it helpful or may want to check it out. And of course, as always, I hope that you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.